Hi everyone, and welcome to another lesson in from the Swift Fundamental Book by Apple. Uh, in the previous video, we talked about in 2.1, we talked about strings, and now we're going to talk about functions. All right. So if you open if in the uh, Swift Fundamental Book, you'll see that functions are the second lesson in the intro, uh, introduction to UI Kit. And what we're going to discuss, we're going to talk about how to define functions. Uh, how we pass uh, values to these functions, how do we uh, assign labels to these functions, how do we return values uh, from these functions, uh, and that's it, all right? So let's get started. <clears throat> okay, so if you open the keynotes, this is the keynotes from the lesson, and Let's start with this. Why do you need functions? Why functions are important to many, to all programming languages, right? Well, in the previous lessons, just in the previous uh, video, for example, we've talked about, we've used functions all the time. Like when you print something, we use a function to print. Uh, in the previous lesson, when we talked about string, there were some functions that we looked at for example, contains function or lowercase function to lowercase. Now, we simply use these functions, but in many cases, we have to create our own functions if we want to make our code maintainable, if we want them to make it reusable. So that's why we need to use functions. The other reason that you, need these, you use functions, you need to abstract complexity from uh, the outside world, if you will, or other programmers, because you just simply create these functions and then you give it to people to use. In the string example, for example, to lowercase, to change all the, these letters to lowercase, it might be a complex algorithm, but I didn't care about it. It's done for me. And then I just simply use, call it when I need it, all right? So let's get started. Functions can have parameters and can sometimes don't have parameters. For example, in this first case, tie my shoe is a function. We're calling a function, but it doesn't have any values. We call those parameters. In the other one, make breakfast, we pass values to these functions. So for example, in this functions, we're passing the food that we're going to eat to make it a breakfast, and then the drink that we're going to drink in that breakfast. All right, so this one has no parameters. This one has parameters. And the next slide, I'm going to show you how we create functions. So this is the syntax to create functions in Swift. Let's start with a keyword func, and then the function name, and then you have optional parameters. You know, you could have one, or you could have none or many or one. So you can have, as uh, the, like in the previous example, you could have sometimes parameters with, uh, you can have functions without parameters, and sometimes you have functions with parameters. And the return, the return type is also optional. Sometimes you want to return a value. Sometimes you don't want to return a value. All right. And then you have the body of the function, which is the, the curly bracket, open curly bracket, and closing curly bracket. So here's this example. We are calling, uh, uh, we are creating a function called display pi, no parameters, the body of the function, and we're simply printing the value of pi. That's the function, the, that's the purpose of this function. Now, this is a simple function, of course, but you'll see later on, we'll create more complex functions. And to call this function, all you have to do is just use the name that you, that you specified for that function. So display pi, this is the function name, display pi. If there were any parameters, we would have to pass those parameters between those brackets. All right, so that's the creating functions in Swift and calling it in the simplest form. In the next slide, we're going to talk about parameters. 
Sometimes you want to pass information to these functions and then they process this information. For example, if you look at that print function, we are passing information to be printed on the console, right? In this example, we're passing a value, we're creating a function called triple and we're passing a value that will be tripled and printed out. So here we have uh, an, a, to specify parameters, you, you give the name or a valid name, like a variable name, a valid variable name and the type of that parameter. Inside the body, we calculated the result, which is the value multiplied by three, we tripled it, and then we printed it out. So we using we printed the value, uh, the multi, you know, if you multiply the value being passed uh, by three, you will get the result. So we're using string, string interpolation to print out the result on the console. And now to call this function is different than the previous case. If you look at the previous case, when we called it, we did not pass any value, but here we will have to pass the parameter. How do you pass the parameter? You use the same parameter name that you have when you define your function, and then you have to specify the same type. So <clears throat> this is an integer, and the value that I need to pass, it has to be an integer as well. And then once you call that function, this is what you will get, all right? Sometimes you wanna pass more than one parameter. You could spe specify multiple parameters. So in, the, in this example, we are passing two parameters. And then you notice this, the difference between this one and the previous example. You have, again, the function multiply, the name of the function multiply. We have one parameter and we have another parameter and they are separated by comma. So if you have multiple parameters, you can list as many as you want, but you need to separate them by comma. So this one, for example, we have, and the first parameter name is called first number. The second parameter name is called second number. In the body of the function, the result is the first num number multiplied by the second number, and then we print out the result. And now to call it, you need to use the same parameter signature. So first name first, first number first, second number next, and then you will separate them again, you pass the value. And again, these values has to match the type of these uh, variables. All right. <clears throat> now, not all functions just print. Sometimes you wanna return a value. So how do we return a value from a function? Now, typically, if you have complex functions, usually they give you something back. For example, the one that we looked at in the string says to lowercase, right? So it will return the lowercase representation of the string that you pass, right? Or does it contain, contain give you true, does it contain a, a string pattern that we're passing? It'll give you, it was either true or false. So now we can specify our return type as well. So here, for example, this function multiply, but instead of printing it, we're giving the result back. How do you do that? So every time we call this function, it would return, you see this minus greater than sign, return an integer. And then you need to specify what you're returning back. Okay. And the return back, the return value has to match whatever you specify here. So if it is an integer, you need to return an int. If it's a Boolean, it's a Boolean, bool, whatever, right? So it's, it's going to match whatever type we pass here. Now, in the body of the functions, the same. The only different here, difference here is that you have this keyword return and result. So this way, after the calculation is done, you give back to the calling body uh, or calling program the result of this calculation. All right. <clears throat> the sometimes uh, you don't need. I mean, you don't you don't need to define a variable all the time to uh, to return the value. So so what you could do is simply calculate uh, return expression. So in this case, it will calculate the expression and return the value. Again, whatever this expression is, has to match the, 
the type of this expression has to match the type of the function. And this is how you call it. So what happens? We call the first, uh, we say my result equal to the return value of this function. So whatever this function is going to give me back will be stored in result. So in this case, 10 will be passed to the first number, five will be passed to the second number. Your calculation will be 10 times five is 50. You return 50. And then this expression, this whole expression will be 50 and then will be assigned to result. And now when you print it, you will get the result, which is 50. <clears throat> you could return, you could also uh, just print directly the return of the function instead of put, assigning it to a result. If you don't need to use that result anywhere or you don't need to use the result uh, of the, the function calling in, in your program, what you could do is just simply print and then call the function instead of assigning it to a variable first, then printing the variable, all right? All right, so if we look at more examples of return values, so here we've, we've, we've taken, we've looked at this example, we've looked at this example, we've looked at this example, and then there's another uh, nice feature with, in Swift, which is, well, I'm trying to make it easier for you. You don't have to specify return if your function only has one line or one expression to return. So in this case, this function only, all it does is just multiply the two numbers and return them back. So I don't need to, in, I don't need to specify the return word, all right? It's up to you, but this is another feature with Swift that you can use to reduce your, you know, the amount of typing you do. <clears throat> argument labels. What does it mean argument labels? What is that? What, what does this uh, feature uh, do for us? Well, sometimes you don't need to use the variable name as the argument label every time. For example, here you will have to, in your, the body of your function, you use the same variable name. So first name is, uh, we're, we're, this function called say hello, we receive a first name and says string and I print it and I use first name, first name here. Same thing when I call it, I need to specify the same name of that variable or that parameter. Well, you could, do something different. And I'm going to show you in the next example how we do something different. So here in this example, another example, we say, say hello to and. So I'm printing print hello to and and. So again, these are the variable names. And then when you call it, you use the variable names. But what if you want to actually use different variable, different descriptive names uh, for calling it and the implementation of it, of the function. So that means is that the, when I call the function, I will use labels instead of the parameter names. And these parameter names will be used in my function. So for example, in this example, we will have a label for the first parameter called two, and the parameter name is person. So person is used in my, the body of my function. The second parameter is the, has a label called and, and the parameter name is called another person. So that's what I use in the body of my function. So when I say print, print hello person and another person. So when I call it, I don't use the parameter names, another person, I use the labels to and. So now I say hello, to Luke and Dave, all right? So this is more descriptive and it gives you uh, flexibility to name your parameters different in a different way than the labels that you use to call those functions, all right? Sometimes you could emit the label for the first parameters or you can emit labels for parameters. But typically I would do it for the first one, you know, just to be consistent. So uh, and avoid confusion. So what do you do? In this case, you say add, we have a function called add. 
underscore first number int to second number int. So when I call this guy, I still use this parameter name in my function, but when I call this guy, I don't need to specify the label for the first parameter. So I just simply say add 14 to six, and then the result of this will be assigned to total, all right? So you can see that it'll give you uh, more flexibility, give you freedom to, to, to name the labels of your, uh, uh, of your function, uh, and it, it makes it more readable. The last thing we're gonna cover today is default values. Now, what is a default value? In some cases, you don't need to pass parameter values all the time, all right? And you see that throughout the Swift language, okay? Sometimes you don't need to specify parameters, but they actually have uh, default values. In, for example, this function display team name and their score receive two parameters, team name and the score. But the difference here is that the score, if I don't specify a score, they will start with zero as their score. So that's a great example of why would you use default value? If it, when we start with assign teams, when we create teams at the beginning, they might have all zero scores, but I can override that and I can pass values to this function and, uh, and uh, uh, only if I need to, all right? So for example, to call this function, if display, display team name, web bat, uh, room bats will be passed to the team name string, score will be passed to 100 will be passed to score so when it'll print it will print one bats 100 now even though you give it a value as a default value you could still override it by actually passing the value but if you don't want to pass a value then i'm going to give you that flexibility as well and the freedom so how do i do that you just simply call that function with the parameters that don't have default values, right? So team name, Wombats, now score is assigned a zero because I did not pass zero to, or I did not pass a value to, to score. And so when you print it, it will print Wombat. This is a tricky feature. Uh, I would suggest that you go to the documentation to, sell, to see the full description of functions because what will happen here if you have, if you start mix match, you know, which one has a default value, which one doesn't have a default value, and then you mix them around here, then the compiler would get confused, say, okay, which one has a, a default value, which one doesn't have a, a default value, and then the order it becomes tricky. So you need to be careful and, and you need to help the compiler as much as possible and be when you define these functions. That's it. So what you need to do next is go to the lab function playground and, uh, and do the labs. Again, functions are uh, uh, very, very, very important. And you're gonna see that over and over and over again as we move along uh, uh, in this book, all right? Have a good day and I'll see you on the next video.